ahead for the Lord Jesus, a wonderful round of applause. My dear friends, God is good. This is the right word. There's nothing bad about the Lord. Everything God does, speaks, and promises, he, he, he does this with an awesome art of doing good. He does it in a most perfect way. You are a product of God. Nobody would be here if it weren't a plan of the Lord God. And you are here to be a blessing in this life. If things have not been going fine for you, do not blame God. Blame your lack of understanding of the word of the Lord. Because when we don't understand what the word is telling us, then we stumble. We do not receive what the Lord has in store for us. And the Lord God has a lot to do in your life. I have been preaching the gospel for more than four decades, and in all the countries where I've been, even places whose language I couldn't understand, and I had an interpreter to translate to their native language, God operated and he did it powerfully. And today God wants to operate in your life in the name of the Lord Jesus. One time in Japan, they handed out a flyer, and it was in Japanese announcing a meeting. It explained that God used me, you know, and then... Uh, a Japanese man went there. And when he got there, before the service started, he said, I want to speak with Dr. Suarez. They said he hasn't arrived yet. But why? Because it is written in the flyer that this man called Jesus can heal, but I don't know who Jesus is. But I am sick, and I want to be healed. So they asked the man to wait, and when Dr. Suarez arrives, he'll hold the meeting. He arrived a half an hour, an hour before the service. He sat down, more people started to arrive, the venue was packed. And when I arrived, I did exactly as when I arrived here. I greeted all the attendees, I preached the word, God blessed us all. And at the end of the service, he asked, where is Dr. Suarez? <laughs> He's already gone. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. But please tell Dr. Suarez that this, this Jesus does heal. He healed me and he's good. The Lord Jesus is good, friends. <laughs> he is the word of the Lord that we're showing to you. Do you want to see a beautiful miracle of his? Show us the testimony in the name of Jesus. And you, ma'am, what happened Dr. to you? Dr. Suarez, I had a nurse give me a massage before I left home because it's been a month that One I've been month. crippled. My friends can bear witness about it. I live in another city, but sometimes I come to this church and I've been limping. How were you walking before? I Show me. I walked like this, dragging my leg, the crippled But now you've one. been healed? I had seven surgeries. Is it over? Yes, it's over. So let's it's walk over. a victory lap together. Come along with me. Do this now. Here we go. All right. Oh, hallelujah. I was ill for a long time. It's all gone? It's gone, thanks to God. Oh, I've to taken God. possession of Go my blessing. Let's clap for Jesus, brethren. <laughs> Dr. Jesus is really good, folks. He excels in every specialty, and there is not a thing, absolutely nothing at all, that's bad that comes out of his hand. The Lord does nothing at all that's not the best for you always. Rest assured that he wants to bless you. In Psalm 119, verse number 118, there's a message here for every person who despises the precepts of God. And what happens to those people? He knows and she knows what they have to do in their lives. They have already learned through the word of God what is wrong, what they should not do ever again. But sometimes they do. They are knowledgeable of what is right, what they should do, but sometimes don't do it. So they are despising the statutes of God, the precepts of the Lord. Let's read what is written. You, speaking to God, reject all those who stray from your statutes. Psalm 119, verse 118. So what is the message here? Every one of those who thinks that they know what to do, but they don't do it, these people are committing sins consciously. They are doing much worse. They are aggravating the Lord God. They're doing even more than that. They are, they are shunning God from them. Therefore, what does God do? God rejects those people. I truly believe that no one in their right mind would say, I want to be rejected by God. Never. Who is the Lord God? Is God the founder of a religion? No, God has no religion at all. God has his holy word. Men have created the most assorted kind of religions and one attacks the other because they don't fear the Lord. Those who fear God preach the word and help people live according to it. Those who fear the Lord are not attempting to lead a group as a manipulated mass. He simply leads them to the knowledge of the truth so that people can understand it. But when people reject God, they will become rejected too. 
You reject all those who stray from your statutes. They know what they are, but they stray from them. And what else? For their deceit is falsehood. That which they deem to be right, which is deceit, is actually falsehood. It can only be the truth when we turn to the holy word of God, and then the word blesses us all. I'd like to pray with you now. Here and those who are at home, bow your heads and close your eyes. God, we enter into your presence. We don't want to be rejected. God, that's why we have to understand every one of your statutes because we have to walk in the light of your holy word. God, even if those people don't fully get it, that which they have understood, they are trying right now and striving to walk according to that truth. It's the only way that they will be able to walk free from any evil onslaught. God, I pray for these people who have a serious hip problem. It's in the left side of their hip, Father, on the back side of it. God, the pain is radiating. It must be the nerve of that person's leg, and they feel great pain in their thigh. These people are suffering, but no matter what the problem is, I will send that evil away. As a minister of God, I say, evil, go away in the name of Jesus, and amen. And there's another miracle for us to watch. Roll that tape because these miracles cause us to awaken. Roll the tape in the name of Jesus. What's your name? Maria das Graças. What couldn't you do before? Well, I work as a homemaker, you know, and when I tried to raise my arms, I couldn't. I had pain here and How in my neck. How long has it happened? More than a year. More than a year? More than a can year. Can you raise your arm now? I can raise it all the way up now, thank <laughs> Let's God. Let's clap for Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He does everything well, brethren. That's why we have to believe in him. Now, speaking of blessings, the Lord God is a God of wonders. I want to meditate with you on Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19, verses numbers 11 and 12, for you to receive your blessing. It is very beautiful. The Lord God, through the Apostle Paul, worked the most extraordinary miracles. Let's see what Luke, the sacred writer, called the beloved doctor by the Apostle Paul himself, Let's see what he wrote here. Acts 19, verses 11 and 12. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. But why did those things happen? Because Paul was a preacher of the word of the Lord, and God did things through him. My brethren, God created certain uh, mechanisms to bless us that we have to respect. The Lord Jesus approached John the Baptist, and John was baptizing people. And when John saw him, he almost fainted, because before him was the Savior of the Word. And John also was a prophet. He saw what was happening. And what can I do? I want to be baptized by you. No, said John the Baptist. I need to be baptized by you, uh, by you, and you are coming to me. But Jesus said, permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then John the Baptist allowed him. So he baptized Jesus in the water. And when Jesus came out of the water, some movies show Jesus being baptized with a jar, but that's all fabrication. There's no need to go down to the river if you use a jar. If Jesus came out, he had entered. It's quite clear he was baptized. Baptism in the Greek language means to immerse. It means to submerge. I dip, I baptize. So after John submerged Jesus, Jesus stood up and what happened? The heavens were opened. Among so many people who have stood out in their lives, and there are so many, in philosophy, in science, and in sports, to only one of them the heavens were opened. It was the Lord Jesus to no one else. There are many institutions across the world that are wise about this world. The philosophical ones and all areas of science are wise. It's beautiful to study those things because they are coherent, but none of them open the heavens for us only when we hear the word of the Lord. To see someone delivering a beautiful speech is precious, but it's to no avail when it stays in the mind level. But when an individual, albeit illiterate, if they know about God and they preach his holy word, the heavens open and you wake up and you do something about it. You want to change your life from then on. 
So Jesus stood up, the heavens were opened, and a voice said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And later on the voice told us, We should hear him only. And when we hear the Lord God, we become blessed. But how should we hear his word? How shall they hear without a preacher? God instituted this system, and he is preparing, during this generation, young men and women, so that when we die, among the coming generation, there will also be preachers full of the Holy Spirit that will bless everyone. But now speaking of us today, what are we here for? We are here today to receive the blessings of the Lord. And back in those days, God worked extraordinary wonders. Doesn't he do them anymore? Of course he does. Here in this church, we have together seen the most spectacular miracles taking place. An arm grew 18 centimeters here. I don't know if any of you were here six or eight years ago when Sandra was healed on a Friday afternoon, and we have that tape of her miracle. She had burnt her arm in an accident, and it was 18 centimeters shorter than the other arm. Following the prayer, her arm grew. And when she came up here, she said, I'm dumbfounded. It's the first time I came here. How did this happen? Sandra's testimony is ready to roll. I'd pay any amount to see that testimony. So, so roll the tape for everybody to see what I'm talking about. Let's all stand up. I want to pray for you because God is operating. Today the service is different because God wants to do something in your life. He wants to do great things right now. Bow your heads and close your eyes. God, I enter into your presence now. I come to bless these people, my Lord who are before you right now. Oh my God, you can heal anybody now. Stretch out your hand and do wonders. God, this arm that cannot perform its normal movements, I want this arm to be delivered now for your glory. Heal it now. I shall use the authority that you have given to me so that these people may be delivered as well. Oh, power of God, get into action now. Say amen. If your arm was unable to perform any exercise, do now what you couldn't do before. Do what you couldn't do. Tell me if your arm has been healed. Who has had their arm healed? Raise your hand like this. 10 years ago, I was burnt in an accident and my arm became 18 centimeters shorter. I have the documents that prove I am disabled. And now my arm's length is normal again. It's simply amazing. I'm deeply touched. Bring that touched. sister up here. Bring her up here, I'm please. I'm shaking. I this can't believe amazing. it. It's Put amazing. Put the mic near her mouth. You're trembling with Ten emotion. Ten years ago, I was burnt in an accident. My belly was burnt. Uh -huh. My entire body. I was a heavy smoker, you These know. These marks here are the scars? Yes, they are just scars now. My arm was 18 centimeters shorter than the other. And how did you burn them? Alcohol. I was a heavy smoker, and when I was going to light a cigarette, the alcohol exploded. Thank God I stopped smoking. And then all of a sudden I was up there praying. How was your arm after the accident? It was the size of a small ruler that children take to school. Was it like this? This arm was shorter. I couldn't stretch my arm like this. And now? Now I can stretch it normally, <laughs> Pastor. <laughs> Look how awesome this is. This is so impressive. I am deeply oh, touched. Oh, Jesus. I've never come here before. And now I receive this blessing. Wow, I'm deeply emotional. <laughs> Thanks be to God. What are these documents this for? This is the proof that I'm a disabled person. Where, where, I don't have to pay for pass? the bus or the subway ticket from the public transportation company. It and this one proves that I am. Here. Yes, I even have a window sticker in my car because I am. I was actually a disabled person, <laughs> but not anymore. Now you don't need anymore. this pass anymore. Now you'll have to pay bus fare, Most right? definitely. Be wrong if you Absolutely, don't. I will. <laughs> and you should keep these documents to prove that you've been healed. Of course. I am super extremely hey, moved, Jesus, Pastor. You're Thanks awesome. be to God. Amen. Let's applaud Jesus, brethren. My friends, what you will hear in the verse 32 of Psalm 119 is important. Some people walk very slowly in the path of the Lord. Come to your senses and stop wronging yourself. The psalmist wrote the following, I will run the course of your commandments. 
God doesn't want you walking around like a turtle, receiving a little blessing occasionally. He wants you to be like a sprinter running in a championship race, where you are running the course of His commandments, the testimonies, and all the commandments that He gives to you. What commandments for you to become a blessing? My friend, stop being a burden to your family, a burden to society, doing wrong things, causing damage and harm, causing people to look at you and think that God is evil. You must awake to the fact that you're included in God's promises and that you have to race. Where should you run, people? The course of the statutes of the Lord God, of God's commandments, the precepts of God, that which He guarantees that He has done and that He's giving to you so you can become a blessing. The moment that you decide to take a stand, today my life will change. From today on, with God's word, Jesus said, without me you can do nothing. I will be that which God says in his word that I should be and that I am before him. You will bring this to your own world. As the Lord's prayer states, thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Have you ever heard of people with crutches in the heavens? There aren't any. Are there toothless people? There aren't. Is there anyone breathing with pain? Give me morphine, I can't stand it. There isn't such a thing. Why? Because the will of the Lord God is done. Jesus is saying, your will be done on earth, my brethren, as it is done in heaven. We have to learn the Lord's commandments and run. But where are we going to run to? For you shall enlarge my heart. When you teach me everything and show me what I have to do to take possession of the blessing. The moment God shows that to you, oh, my dear brother, my dear sister, you will have the capacity granted by the Lord God to become the blessing that he has planned you to become. And then what will happen? God will be glorified because you will receive your blessing. That woman came here for the first time. She sat up there in the gallery on a Friday at 2 o'clock. And she heard the word of God. As you saw, I had even asked directly to God for ailing arms to become healed. And so many other times, the Lord God has already proven that this can and must happen. And he wants this to happen in your life as well. Now we're going to pray. Please stand up and I will call on the Lord's power. My brethren, stop, stop right now with the doings of the devil in your life. If you feel pain in your body that won't subside, you can't raise your arm, you can't bend your legs, you are dragging your feet. It seems even as you are about to fall down. Let's put an end to that. Let's take possession of the blessing in the name of Jesus. Bow your heads and close your eyes. God, I enter in the name of Jesus into your presence not only on behalf of those who are here, but also on those who are spread out through this entire country. The enemy has been acting. There are people whose minds are disturbed. They're having wrong thoughts. God, this person's heart harbors a passion and they're about to do something crazy. I want them to be delivered, complete, dear Lord, and forever. There are people whose legs seem to be bound by a rope and they can't stretch them. It's got to go, God. Nothing can hold them down now. Jesus cried on the cross of Calvary. It's finished. The operation of the enemy is over. Other people have an ailing neck, God. When they try to turn their neck, they have to turn their whole body. God, other people have a serious problem in their liver, a serious disease in their gallbladder, a serious disease in their kidneys. Oh God, but most serious, most important is your faithfulness. That is made known to every generation. The same faithfulness you had towards people in the day of Jesus while he was here on earth, you have towards my generation. And in your presence, I am calling on you on their behalf. And I want to see you operating. God, I am going to use the authority that you have given to me, and this evil will leave. It will crumble to the ground now. As a minister of the gospel, I paralyze each and every action of the enemy in their life. And I say to you now, spirit of disease, of infirmity, that's lodged in their back, in their vertebrae, in their disc, 
the demons that's lodged in these people's hips, in their sciatic nerve, in their knees, in their ligaments, the kneecap, or any other part of the knee. You demon who's lodged in the lives of these people, in the soles of their feet, in their lives, in their marriages, in their financial lives, Listen to me, devil. Get out of their lives right now. Leave now because I command you. I'm demanding. Gather what is yours and leave. Believe me now, dear brethren. It is leaving. I am commanding you now. Leave their arm. Let go of their leg. Let go of their body. Go away, pain. Go away, wounds. Go away, disease. Leave now in the name of Jesus. And you say, thank you, Jesus. I believe in you, Lord. Look at me now. If you couldn't raise your arms, raise both of them now without any fear. Clap your hands in the name of Jesus. If you couldn't do this, do it right now for the glory of the Lord. That's it. If you couldn't bend your legs, bend them now in the name of Jesus. Flex them. Flex them now. Your disease is over. Your neck. Turn your neck now. See if the lumps, the disease is still there in the name of Jesus. Dr. Suarez, my pain is gone now. The evil is gone now. I can see people being healed. Don't sit down. Give me some time. I'll test your faith now. Who has been healed now? Who has been set free? Raise your hands in the name of Jesus. You over there. I had pain in the joints of my fingers. I've just been healed. Amen. Up there in the gallery. My neck was stiff, but not anymore in the You're name of now. Jesus. You here in the front row, sister. What happened? Well, I had a pain in my in my leg. When I bent it, it would get numb, but it's not anymore. It's gone. It's gone. And you, brother, what happened to you? I had a pain in my back, and I felt a burning sensation in my back, uh -huh. and I'm healed now. And you, my brother, over there. It was my arm. My arm hurting a lot for the past few days. I couldn't lift any weight at all, but now... It's fine. It's healed. Thank God. Behind him, there's a lady. Let me hear that lady's testimony. I had strong pain in the soles of my feet, but now I feel better. And what was the matter with that lady over there? As Tell I me. was coming to church yesterday, I fell from the bus and my arm got stiff. But now, it's healed look, now? it's healed. You're free. And you, sister, tell me what happened. I was feeling a strong pain in my breast, you know. It was a throbbing pain. Uh -huh. Suddenly it was over, thanks to God. It's gone. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now let me hear that lady over there. Let me hear her testimony. What happened to you, sister? Pain in my legs. It's all gone now. It's all gone now. Amen. Here in the front row, tell me about it, sister. Pain in my arms. I've had this pain for two months, you know. My fingers Are were numb. Are you free now? I'm healed and in the name of Jesus. And over there in the back, what happened to you? I had two lumps in my neck. They're both it's gone. amazing, people. One right after the other. We can see that God is operating. Our God is powerful. Up there in the gallery, there's someone else. Let's go to the gallery. What happened? Pain in my neck, Dr. Suarez. I just couldn't turn my neck. It was really very painful here in this part, but I've just felt it burning and thank God it's gone. Now let me pray. So close your eyes. God, these people who feel pain in their hands, they can barely open or close them. I don't know what it was, if it's the result of an accident with a knife or because of arthritis, but they are suffering. God, heal them in the name of Jesus. Demon, get out of their hands in the name of Jesus. Open and close your hands in the name of Christ. Tell me, can you open your hands now, people? Who had a problem with their hands in the name of the Lord? Raise your hand. What was the problem? I spent the whole week, Dr. Swad, is feeling pain in my fingers over here, you know. Uh -huh. It seemed that there was a lump, but now it's gone. It's gone now? It's gone. Who else had their hands healed? Who can tell me their hands are just fine now? Raise your hands. I want to hear your testimony in the name of Jesus. What happened, sister? Eight years ago, I was involved in an accident. The car turned over and I lost movement of these two fingers. And thank God I can move them now. Isn't it thank awesome, God. brethren? Let's applaud for the Lord thank Jesus. Thank God. You may be seated now. I'm going to talk to this sister here. You may be seated. Tell us what happened to you last Sunday that you want to tell us. Tell the, us about the it. The doctors told me that I had, and it was, last, it was last Sunday, it was during the Holy Supper. You talked huh. about a person who had arthrosis in the arm, in the knees, and you also spoke of the inflammation of the foot. And uh -huh. at that moment, I felt you were speaking to me. And today I can testify that my foot had a swelling. Uh -huh. I was about to have an MRI. I haven't done it yet because I am completely healed. I couldn't sleep at night, but now I don't feel any pain oh, at all. Oh, glory to God. Let's applaud the Lord Jesus. Thank you. 
Brethren, you may be seated. Everything has its right time. If you want to testify a beautiful miracle, talk to one of the workers, and later on your story will be recorded so we can give glory to God in the name of Jesus. And he has more to do today for the glory of the Lord. Amen? Now let's go to the question and answer segment. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Dr. Suarez, what should I do whenever I feel empty? Empty? Well, obviously I will say that you must become filled, but filled with the word of the Lord. You must harbor the word of the Lord. You have to pray and say, God, I'm a little sad these days. I feel empty, kind of lost. So open the scriptures. A message will pop up, so you hold fast to that. Don't ever let it go in the name of Jesus. Second question now. Should I give offerings every time I go to church? Some people don't understand the offerings and feel bad about it. Some people, before leaving home, they pick up a dollar bill and put it aside. This is my share of the money. But this one dollar bill here I'll give is my offering. It's better not to even give anything. The offering is nothing but an expression of love. When people understand, they ask the Lord to speak to them about it. Because they know this, give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, it will be put into your bosom. You come to church, the pastor is collecting, he can't charge, the church has an open door, all the services are completely free of charge. And then he says, the pastor says, we have to pay the electricity bill, the water bill, or whatever bill it is. In our case, there are many bills because we're on TV, it's very expensive. Then we need people to help us financially, and God will touch their heart. If he didn't touch yours, then it's not with you. But if you can, you should offer the amount that God told you. When people learn that offerings are a blessing, they give it. It's one of the things the devil rises up against in the church. The devil doesn't want in any circumstance for the people of God to be blessed. So when you feel that and your heart is touched, it's called heave offering. God speaks, you feel it, and you give the offering. Let me pray now for those who are watching from home because the program is ending in a few minutes. Beloved God, what a festival of blessings we have witnessed today. So many people are at home now, and some of them, God, they just cannot get out of their place. And they are coming of age, and along with them, the health problems too, and they're not being able, God, to get rid of their problems. But you are a God who hears and answers all prayers. God, I join my faith with the faith of these people, and now I demand all evil to leave. God, I am certain that you will bless these people. Therefore, I say to you, be free now. Devil, gather all of your belongings and leave their life and don't ever return again in the name of Jesus. Amen.